I've seen people make excuses for the man that's hitting them. She had convinced herself that she was the only one that was able to get him to lose his temper like that. Yesterday, I put out a video where I talked about um, the lady from St. Pete who was who was killed by her child's father. And then the her child's father actually killed the child. And I really mainly just wanted to to warn women about these kind of men, you know, try to warn them about staying away from men that that are, are you know, easy to to snap, you know, make sure you take your time to get to know men before you get in too deep. You know, and, and I talked about just abuse in general because there are some other video some other uh instances that I talked about in that video and all of them had an element of domestic violence or abuse at the hands of either uh like the one story I talked about it was a, a woman that killed her husband and then it was the one story that I just talked about, and then there was another where a guy beat his baby mama up at work at her job and then basically went on a, a chase with the police and he ended up killing their daughter that they had. So, you know, like I said, I, I hate for these type of situations to happen. So that was the reason why I talked about that. And then in that video, I, I said that if you are in a situation where you're being abused or anything like that, then you just need to leave. And I've been seeing in the comments where people have been saying that it's not that easy. You know, um, if you've never been abused, then you don't know how it feel because the person uh, ends up basically grooming you into a person that will, will take the abuse and then they'll scare you into leaving. And I get that. I understand that. In that same video, I, I talked about something that my mom went through in the past. And I saw her go through all those different emotions. You know, I, I've seen other relationships that were toxic or abusive. And I know that it's not the easiest thing to just walk away from. A lot of people don't even realize that they're being abused. <laughs> it's as crazy as that sounds. You can be getting hit and you will make it. I've seen people make excuses for the man that's hitting them. You know, I've actually saw a woman like in real life. She was bragging about the fact that her kid's dad would hit her. And she she took it as he really loved her. She had convinced herself that he loved her so much that she was the only one that was able to get him to lose his temper like that. So she almost took it as a badge of honor. As crazy as it sounds, I know people that, you know, have been manipulated into these situations. And I know that it's not easy to get out of. But that's the reason why it's important for people to make videos like this to shine a light on this type of situation. So with this video, what I want to do is I want to give y'all some signs to look for. If you're in a relationship, you could be being manipulated and you don't even realize it. So... What I want to do, like I said, is I want to give you some signs and I want to kind of equip you and, and give you some things to look for so you can investigate deeper. And also, if you see these signs, pump your brakes and really get to, to the root of those problems before you go any further. So let me go ahead and get into it. Before... I tell you the signs, I just want to tell you this, what I've noticed about abusive people in general, because I know this video is about how to, uh, like signs that you're being groomed by an abusive man. There's also men 
that are being groomed by abusive women. The the abuse it, it often looks different, but it's still abuse. Men go through abuse as well. Just because a man is a man and we we uh on average are bigger than a woman and stuff like that, we we think like a a, a woman can't hurt us or whatever the case may be. But I just told a story about a man that was killed on Facebook Live by his wife, you know, and it was a a bad situation to be in you can tell you know so what i what i what i've noticed about abusive people is that their method is to build you up and then tear you down systematically what they want to do what they're trying to accomplish is gaining control of your emotions they want you to think that the, their your happiness comes from them. And the evidence that they look for is whether or not they can control you being happy or sad. It's all about control. Abusers need to be in control. So in the beginning of a relationship, and this is why I say for all people what you must do is learn to love yourself. Self-exploration is a must if you think if you even thinking about getting in a relationship. Because if you have some some insecurities, you have some mental pro some some uh, emotional problems that you are, you're dealing with, some struggles, you need to to heal. Because a opportunity a oppor opportunistic person will sniff those things out and they will use them against you. If you're somebody that struggles with loving yourself and you don't have confidence in yourself, guess what the man can do? Come to you like a knight in shining armor, telling you all of the things that you need to hear. If you don't love yourself, you struggle with love, what is he going to tell you? What is he going to pretend to show you? That he loves you. And they can tell very quickly whether or not you have issues with self-love. If you're insecure, the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, you know what I'm saying? All of those things play a, a part in letting a person know what you think about yourself. And a lot of it ain't even verbal. It's, a lot of it is nonverbal. You know what I'm saying? But these people can pick up on those things. And like I said, use it against you. So if you're in a new relationship and fairly quickly, you start hearing your man tell you, I don't know what I would do without you. If you start hearing a man tell you things like, if I was to lose you, I don't know what I, I, I would probably go crazy. If a man tell you anything where he's seemingly He's uh talking about harming you, and he might be smiling when he said. You might think it's cute. You might not think he's serious. I seen a man tell a woman, "You gotta die out of this, like you like the mob. You gotta die out of this, out of this relationship, just like the mob." And inside, and and you can look at her when when she when the dude say that, and and she thinking to herself, "Oh my God, he really loved me." <laughs> That's not love. Why I got to threaten you to stay with me? I got to threaten you to make you stay with me, whether it look like I'm playing or not. You know, and I understand some couples, they play, you know, you, you play, fight, all those things. You know, it's I play with my wife sometimes, you know what I'm saying? We play with each other. But I've never told my wife anything like that. You know, you you leave me, you're going to die in it. No. <laughs> And <laughs> that's stuff you don't play about. You know what I'm saying? So they want to make you feel like they can't live without you. They ain't going nowhere. You ain't got to worry about it. They going to always be with you. and You know what I'm saying? They going to make it seem like they going to be faithful. They going to make you think that they love you so much that they would never cheat on you. They would never do you wrong. But when it, when it, with an, an abusive person, 
it's all an act. With a narcissistic person, it's all an act. When you see somebody, I tell you this one, I done seen a lot of this, right? Tattooing a person's name. If a person is trying to get you to tattoo their name on, on you, <laughs> that's a sign that they trying to, I mean, they trying to brand you. They trying to let it be known that you belong to them. They, your, their name is on you forever. You know, I don't, I don't, I've seen people uh, make these grand gestures of going to get their spouse's name tattooed on them. I'm gonna tell you this: that's a form of manipulation. You can be with a with a guy, and then he show up with your name tattooed on him. He want to make you he he willing to go to that extent to make you feel like he love you. Oh my God, he tatted he tatted my name on his on his chest. He really loved me, girl. He ain't never going nowhere. I got him whooped. Next thing you know, some months later, you getting whooped physically. The average healthy-minded person ain't walking around thinking about tattooing somebody's name on them. You know, your body's a temple. Your body belongs to God. So why would you go and, and stamp somebody else's name on it? Because essentially what you're saying is God don't own your, your body. That person whose name is on your body is who own your body. Why would you put that message out there? If you're willing to go to, go to that extent, that says a lot. So if you're a woman and you got a man, or you're a man and you got somebody trying to pressure you to tack their name, if you got to do all that to prove that you love them, go on about your business. You don't got to do those kind of things to show somebody that you love them. And then I'm going to tell you this, to a lot of people, that junk don't mean nothing no way. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, I was with this girl, and we ended up breaking up. And um, while we was broke up, her sister ended up calling me while they was at a tattoo shop, telling me, Shoemate, my sister tattooing your name. What? I don't believe that. We wasn't even talking at the time. Sure enough, this girl went and tattooed her, my name real big on her back. What did I think? Oh, my God, she really loved me. <laughs> she really loved me. Man, when I tell you this girl was the biggest liar I had ever met in my life, she lied about everything. She can tell she will lie about the weather. She will lie about everything, bro. Any, it don't matter. Everything that you can lie about, she will lie about it. So tattooing somebody's name to a person like that don't even mean nothing. Um, another thing. I've seen a lot of situations, and you see it in movies too, where you can be with a person, right? You can be with a man, right? And all of a sudden, he started trying to rush you to have his baby. I want you to have my baby. I'm going to get you pregnant. You start hearing stuff like that come out their mouth, right? All that is is a way to lock in with you, to make it where you can't get away. Which they have to have some kind of way to really dig their claws into you. Otherwise, you can just leave. If they can't beat you down, if they can't break you mentally enough, what they'll do is they'll try to hurry up and rush and attach themselves to you. So they'll, they'll get you pregnant. I saw a lady coming in on a video a couple weeks back how her and her boyfriend bought a house together. They bought a car together, but he won't marry her. <laughs> Why would you be willing to buy a house with a person or have a baby with a person, but not get married? Because I want to be able to walk away from you when I feel like walking away. If I marry you, then I might not be able to get away when I feel like it. 
You know what I'm saying? It's all kind of games being played. They have to lock you in. Because like I said earlier, the 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 game is build you up to tear you down. And in the building up phase, it's fun for you. You having a good time. You feeling you feeling good. You think this person love you. You you falling in love with them. But they're preparing you for the breakdown. And they have to lock in with you. They have to dig their claws in you before they begin to break you down. You know? Because after they done put you, made you feel like you on this pedestal, right? One day out of the blue, he started making comments about your appearance. Start talking about you in ways where it hurt your feelings. He been making you feel like he, like he was in so, so much love all this time. Not all of a sudden he telling you you fat. Not all of a sudden he don't like your hair. Now all of a sudden, he's gaslighting you. He he telling you 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 don't know how to be a good woman. You know what I'm saying? He telling you that that you're disrespectful. He's telling you that you don't love him. He's telling you all these things, but you know deep down in your heart you're going out of your way to respect this man. You're going out of your way to show this man that you love him. You do everything that you can possibly think of to show this person that you love them. But they'll tell you, man, you don't want to do nothing for me. <laughs> I'm unhappy. I don't feel like you care. You know what I'm saying? All these things. You're not willing to give me sex as much as I want it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Some relationships, you, I mean, that's a legitimate complaint. But if you know you breaking that man off on the regular, and then he'll come and tell you that you're not. It's like y'all live in two different realities. And that's a way that the breakdown begins. Another thing is this. As I said earlier, I've, I've seen instances where a woman was getting hit and she actually thought that it was a badge of honor. The man started hitting you after he done already started breaking you down. He might grab you. Anything physical. Don't stand for that. Your man shouldn't be putting his hands on you. I'm not going to ever put my hands on my wife. I ain't even never cussed at my wife. I ain't never called my wife out of her name. I ain't never called her no B, no H-O. I ain't never called her stupid. <laughs> I ain't never called her none of that stuff. Because there's certain things that should never come out of your mouth. I don't care how mad you are. I done been mad at my wife before. But I ain't never thought of, thought of calling her out her name or trying to make her feel like she was less than a woman because I was mad. A healthy-minded person to talk about what they mad about. You know what I'm saying? So don't stand for physical abuse at all. There is no reason that a man should be putting his hands on you. There is no reason that a woman should be putting her hands on a man. Keep your hands to yourself because we all know what happened with that. I've seen situations where like, some women think that they can get away with doing that. I mean, I've seen situations <laughs> where I remember one time I had a friend Man, call me, say, hey, bro, I need you to come pick me up. Why, what happened? Man, she in here tripping, man. The police done came, and um, they finna take her to jail, and I got the kids. <laughs> what? Yeah. Put your hands on the on a guy, thinking ain't nothing gonna happen. Some places, they will take you to jail. So keep your hands to yourself. You know what I'm saying? There is no reason for physical abuse to be going on. I don't care how mad a person get mad, how mad a person get at you. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep your hands to yourself. Let's talk, let's talk this out. 
if we can't talk our way through an issue, then we got a big problem on our hands and we need to go find a, a counselor or something that can help us through it. But we should never get to the point where I, well, a, a man punch you in your eye or you punch him in his eye or something like that. And never allow him to tell you that he hit you because he loved you or he lost his, he lost his temper because he loved you so much and he was scared of, of you leaving him or some junk like that. That ain't love. Usually, after this happened, though, I'm going to tell you how a lot of these dudes get away with it. After they done put their hands on you, they'll go in that store and buy you a gift that's big enough to, to make your eyes get big and it'll take the sting off of what he done done to you. You're being manipulated. That's the, the, the cycle getting ready to start over. In the beginning, they build you up. They dig their claws into you, and then they tear you down. After they done tore you down so far, they got to begin to build you up again. They got to make up for all that, that bad they done done. So let me buy you something. If you fall for the extravagant gifts, you're falling for the, for the, for the game that they're running. Because what they do is they buy you the gifts and then they start all the way over from square one. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you, baby. I'm so sorry I treat you wrong. I wish I could, I wish I can change. I need to go to therapy. I need to go to church. Baby, you want to go to church? All those things you start hearing him say, and you start believing that he really sorry. And the next thing you know, here come the cycle starting all the way over again. If this is what's going on in your relationship, you are being manipulated and or abused. And you need to start looking for a way to put a stop to this cycle. You got to plan your exit. And I know that it's, it's scary to leave somebody that's an abusive person. So you're you going to have to be strategic about it. You may not be able to just pick up and move to your mama house because he might come over there. But you need to start looking for, for people that can can really help you through this type of situation. There's shelters out there. I know, you know, I t my mom got a daycare, right? I've known of women that have ended up bringing their kids to my mom's daycare because they flee from different states and got here to, to where we live at, and they had to move into a women's shelter, and their kids was going to my mom's daycare until they was able to get themselves on their feet. You know, I've donated jackets and stuff like that to women like that before. So you may have to get extreme with it. You know, restraining orders don't necessarily do anything. Only thing they do is make it where, you know, it's 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 uh it's known to to law enforcement that this person ain't supposed to be around you. So if they come, then you can get them locked up. But nine times out of ten, by the time the police get there, it's too late. So, you know, that restraining order is good to have it, but you can't rely on it. It's just a piece of paper. And a, a person that's an abuser or something like that, if they crazy enough to put their hands on you, they don't care nothing about no piece of paper. That's the reason when I was 15 years old, I decided that I was going to take things into my own hands and do something to the person that was trying to abuse my mama because she had a restraining order on him and he was still posting up in front of our house late night, watching us get groceries out the car and put them in the house, watching us pull up to the house after dinner at night and going in the house. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting there and people will walk up to us, hey, like they'll walk up and, and, and ease up on my mama real, you know, real slick like and be like, hey, just want to let you know he over there behind that building. It was stuff like that going on. It was even one time I remember the dude came to the house and had a restraining order. My mama called the police. Police get there. This dude walking down the street. The police stopped. 
and asked him, hey, you seen somebody walking around with a white T-shirt on? Oh, no, nah, I ain't seen nobody. It was him. So you got to protect yourself. Go get you a concealed carry permit. Get you some mace, a taser or something like that. Get you a bat, get anything <laughs> and learn how to use it. Get involved in a church. Let the pastor know. Let the ladies in the church know. Somebody will help you. Get into a, a, a shelter. If you got brothers, let them know what's going on. A lot of times uh, these abusers are able to get away with what they're doing for so long because you scared to tell people or you embarrassed to tell people. Man, you got to tell everybody. Let everybody know. So if something pop up and something happen, y'all, they, everybody already know who done it. And he know if he ain't, if he, if he got a little bit of sense left in his head, he'll know oh, I can't do nothing to her because she done told everybody I'm doing all this stuff. I got to leave her alone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's all I really want to say on this video. Um, if you got any input, I want y'all to leave it in the comments on this video. Um, I'm trying to to shed light on the situation, the situations that happen, like the one that uh that I talked about in my video yesterday. You know, it's happening way too much. A lot of women being killed, a lot of women being beat, and it's something got to change. So I hope this video helped y'all. If uh, you know somebody that's in this situation, share this video with them. And y'all do me a favor, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I will see y'all on the next one.